Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, the worst thing to do is start a presentation with an apology. Uh, the apology is I'm not going to be here for, uh, for coffee, so I've got to go straight off. So if anybody does want to speak to me, I'll have all of my contact details on the last slide. Please feel free to give me a call anytime or email me. Uh, the topic I'm going to be talking about is the, the new certifications that are coming through and some of the initiatives that are happening both in the UK government and with the UK financial service regulators. Uh, so what I'd start with a very brief background in terms of what CREST is all about. Uh, CREST is a not-for-profit organisation, which is really very important to us. And what we do is we are credit companies. So in other words, on behalf of the buying community, we assess professional services suppliers in terms of technical security areas, including penetration testing, intrusion analysis, malware reverse engineering, security architecture. Uh, and we ensure that they have in place acceptable policies, processes and procedures to protect your information and to carry out their services in, in a professional manner. We tie that together with a code of conduct. The code of conduct is extremely stringent and actually has a lot of teeth. If we remove somebody from our register, it's extremely difficult for that penetration testing or incident response organisation to provide services in the UK financial services. We also have a back-to-back -back agreement with CESG as part of the check scheme. And again, we would report that we've removed somebody from their register, uh, which could remove them from their or remove their ability to provide services to the UK government. It's a very big stick that we don't really want to use, but it's an important part to make sure that there is protection in place for the buying community. In addition to that, we provide professional qualifications. Uh, in other words, we certify individuals. Historically, that's been around about 10,000 hours, uh, around about five years' worth of regular and frequent experience. Our examinations are really hard, really difficult, and the people who pass them at the higher levels are excellent and really professionals and experts in their field. We dropped down in terms of 6,000 hours, and what we've just done is introduced around about a 2,000 hour exam, and that's for one of our schemes, but also to tie in with things like the higher apprenticeship program and some of the master's degree programs. In addition to that, we do knowledge sharing. Again, we are doing some work with the ISF um, indirectly on things like industrial control systems. We're also looking at some of the secure coding, and they've just been helping us as well with some of the reviews we've been doing of uh, network monitoring and logging. So I'd like to think that what we're trying to do is collaborate together in terms of these not-for-profit organisations to provide a much more consistent service to, to the buying community. And also we do quite a lot of professional development. Our aim is to represent the technical security industry and on behalf of the buying community provide access to trusted company with knowledgeable, skilled and competent individuals. The main topic I'm going to be talking about today is something called CBEST and STAR. Um, it's a really interesting uh, move forward. I've been in the industry for a very long time and I think this is a major step forward in terms of the way we're actually doing this type of threat assessment and what we're doing in terms of technical assessments, in other words, penetration testing reviews. The idea was that uh, we were looking at the existing penetration testing services, which we think are fit for purpose. So in other words, we've got the skill and knowledge of the tester, the tools that they use, the validations from peer groups. There's a lot of interworking, OWASP and people like that are really good to, to help that community to share information. Uh, and then what we're trying to do there is combine that with company research and public threat, published threat intelligence. As far as I'm concerned, that existing approach to penetration testing is more than adequate for the vast majority of, um, uh, of the target organisations, be they financial services or others. And therefore, it's appropriate for the vast majority of the attack vectors. So in other words, for normal attacks that you would see coming through on your networks, this type of penetration testing will provide you appropriate levels of assurance. It's well established and well understood. And as I said, I think it meets the vast majority of the requirements. However, if you look at what we're doing in terms of systems, there's a number of critical uh, environments that we need to consider. Parts of the critical national infrastructure, parts of the very critical things that if they have an adverse effect on the UK economy or on the economy of that particular organisation. And if you look at this, what other information do we need? I'd really like to add in up-to-date internet information, and what we're trying to do there is work with CERT UK to try to provide more access to, to th um, real incident information. Um, that, I say, is still in its, its maturity phase, so in other words, we haven't actually included that yet, but that's certainly our intention. And at the bottom here is the, is the most relevant part, up-to-date threat intelligence. Up until now, it's been very difficult to identify what the threats really are. In other words, what are the real threats that your organisations are exposed to? And what's happened over the last few years is we've seen a new industry start to evolve, which is the threat intelligence service providers. 
because those organizations potentially are worth quite a lot of money and they're of great interest to a large number of organizations, there's been a proliferation in terms of the number of organizations that say they are providing these services. And as with penetration testing, what the community needed was a way of differentiating those services to actually see who's professional, who's providing those services in an appropriate fashion, and who can deliver what it is they actually say they would do. So we've been working very closely with, with the threat intelligence service providers, but really the main driver for this has been the Bank of England. The Bank of England wanted a way of providing additional levels of assurance for critical parts of the UK financial services. And what they asked Crest to do was to look at how we could accredit companies, both in terms of the penetration testing services and also how we could accredit companies in terms of the threat intelligence. And in addition to that, how we could actually look at the qualifications required of the individuals providing both the analysis and testing services. So we developed a, a version of something called STAR, Situational Targeted Attack and Response. And the reason why we did that, I'll come on to in a moment. There's significant interest in this from other financial services regulators throughout the world. This is a really hot topic and it's a really interesting area. There's also significant interest from other parts of the UK um, critical national infrastructure. This really makes sense. So in other words, traditional penetration testing for your mainstream businesses and something more stringent and much more orientated towards a targeted attack for your critical assets. And therefore, it's of very great interest to other parts of the critical national infrastructure. And what we wanted to do is have the ability to build a scheme that we could implement in other areas, both geographically and also in terms of sectorial. We've got quite a lot of support from CERT UK, but as I say, that's maturing. Um, and Newcrest companies are coming into this area in terms of the threat intelligence service providers. So although it's an emerging industry, it's really interesting because we're pulling together very large organisations that are doing big data type analysis and very small boutiques that have specific tools and specific expertise in terms of the threat intelligence area. And also we're, we're developing uh, specific examinations, uh, particularly in the threat intelligence areas. So working with the Bank of England, um, we, we established something called CBEST. So we, div we des designed something called STAR, and then a derivative of that is CBEST. CBEST is the Bank of England derivative of STAR. The Bank of England, therefore, can put additional requirements in terms of the types of organisations it would like to work with, and also potentially with the types of individuals that can provide those services. There's quite a lot of confusion in the marketplace, and we've made that confusion, I think. Um, in terms of a CBEST activity can only be requested by the Bank of England. So in other words, the Bank of England will go to a UK financial services organisation, it will say, we want a greater level of assurance in terms of this particular service you're providing, we would like to run a CBEST activity. And that's the only time you can run a CBEST. Anything else in terms of this area would be a STAR type review. And, and that's quite important. What we're doing here is we're working in a highly regulated environment and we're trying to push technical security measures and testing in a very regimented, very traditional area of the business. So in other words, a highly regulated part of, of the UK financial services. And we have to be really careful. There is a fantastic opportunity for us to do something really good in this area, but if we upset the regulators, the proper big regulators, then we're going to have some real problems. So we have to be very, very careful with the words that we use. So, a CBS activity will need input from both the specialist penetration testing organisations and the threat intelligence service providers. And, and the important thing to bear in mind is this is what the Bank of England is requesting, but you can do a STAR uh, type activity on any of your systems that you wanted to. And therefore, that, that derivative aspect is very important. From our perspective, what that means is we've got the STAR system in the middle that is run by, by CREST. We are, CREST. we are credit organisations and then we pass that accreditation over to the Bank of England, and they make a decision whether or not they're going to include them as part of the CBES scheme, and they will request a CBES activity. The reason why I put STAR in the middle here was because we already had a lot of interest from overseas financial services regulators, and I wanted them to be able to have their own derivative based on the good practice that we've developed in terms of this area. In addition to that, I wanted other parts of the CNI community to also have access to this, and the intelligence and the way they actually run these might well be different, and some of their requirements for the company membership or the individual membership may also be different as well. For example, you could put in there UK national, nationality requirements, or you could put in UK domiciled organisation type requirements. There are slight differences, and that derivative and standard is, is an ability to, to provide those types of services. This is a really good scheme, and I think it's really exciting. It actually demonstrates that the UK is driving the initiatives in this area. 
I thought I'd touch on another couple of things as well that are relevant to this audience. Uh, there's another scheme called Cyber Essentials. Uh, it's actually Cyber Essentials and Cyber Essentials Plus. Any organisation here should be aiming for the Cyber Essentials Plus at the very limit, uh, at the very least. Um, and that's again a certification service that's provided on behalf of the UK government. So we work very closely with the, with, again, with the ISF um, and the UK government to develop particularly the Cyber Essentials Plus area. And, and the UK government underwrites a certificate that's issued by the certification bodies. If you want the certification bodies under the CREST scheme, then have a look on our website and they'll describe the organisations that can provide that certificate to you. But it's a basic cyber hygiene test. In addition to that, if you look at the NSA, they're also doing a basic cyber hygiene test. And there is an opportunity to internationalise some of these standards and pull them together. I'll come on to why I describe that in a minute. Um, there's also another scheme uh, it's called the CIR and CSIR scheme. These are two things that look at cyber incident response. The CIR scheme is run on behalf of the UK government. Again, Crest helped to, to develop that. And it's a small, very focused area in terms of cyber incident response. And it's looking for, um, uh, that only looks at state-sponsored attack, uh, very serious organised crime that can have an adverse effect on the UK economy, and other areas that may be of interest to the UK security services. The third one is quite difficult to define. Um, everything else, in terms of a cyber incident response, drops down to the CSIR, and that includes other government departments. So this is the provision of organisations that can help you to identify where an attack has, has come from, help you to recover, and also clean up. It's a really good thing. It was established around about nine months ago, and what I've tried to do is let it bed in. I've let, uh, let us develop capacity in the marketplace to be able to provide these services. And over the next year, we're working with CPNI, who have also underwritten this particular scheme, as well as CESG. We're going to be promoting this within the industry in terms of this is good practice in terms of cyber incident response. All of a sudden, you've got a load of schemes. This is very potentially confusing, um, but... What we're trying to do here is, in our minds, we have a, we have a road map in terms of where the, in the direction we want to go in. And so if you look at this, you've got the CREST penetration testing and also the cyber incident response. You've got the CBEST penetration testing, the derivative on behalf of the Bank of England. You've got the STAR scheme, which is a central part. And then you've got other initiatives like CHECK, who run both the penetration testing service and also the CHECK scheme is responsible for the CIR, the cyber incident response scheme. Um, that looks like too many schemes, but all of a sudden you can actually start to structure it. So in other words, an organisation can therefore start at the bottom with cyber essentials and can gradually work up and it can stop at an appropriate point in terms of the type of organisation that it is. So in other words, if you're an SME utilising standard off-the-shelf product, it might well be the case that all you need to do is look at cyber essentials. If you're an SME utilising standard off-the-shelf products, but your IT is actually a part of the enablement of the business, I would absolutely recommend you should go for Cyber Essentials Plus. So in other words, that's looking at some of the technical areas, making sure you've got technical controls in place. We then move up into the next level of penetration testing. At that point, there isn't any certification, interesting enough. I also think that area there, particularly for the audience that I'm addressing today, is probably too broad. And I think we could probably cut that one in half and have two levels of certification potentially in that area. You are the buying community. If you want the industry to provide that type of certification and those sorts of structured services, you should come and talk to us and you should tell us what it is you want and you should help us to develop it. This should be driven by the end user buying community, but very often it's being driven by the service providers who need a differentiation in the marketplace. And at the very top here, you've got uh, the critical specialist business functions with a market or country influence. So in other words, you can identify that you need to do different things at that sort of very high level. And all of a sudden, once you've got that in your head in terms of the level of assurance you're trying to achieve, you can apply other things to it. For example, qualifications. So under the CREST scheme, again, you've got practitioner level here that can provide cyber essentials type services. You've got Crest registered, we've always provided the normal penetration testing services on behalf, of, on behalf of UK financial services, but also they provide the services under the check scheme. So again, an organisation, sorry, an individual has to carry a, a recognised qualification and some of those qualifications are Crest uh, to provide penetration testing under the check scheme. And at the top level, you've got specialist areas for some of these critical national infrastructure areas. Once you've done that, then all of a sudden you can look for equivalencies, both in the UK and internationally, in terms of other recognised qualifications that are of an equivalent nature. And again, we can do that in quite a formal way. We can then start to define career paths. 
Um, Creston's been working with eSkills and others to define career paths in this industry. We originally did around about six day in the life videos. Uh, we had six and a half thousand downloads of that in a month. Um, so all of a sudden, just in that small area of penetration testing, there was an awful lot of interest in how do you get into this industry and what does a career look like? Uh, we've now created in the region of about 55 day in the life videos and tried to cover every single job role that we can think of in the IA community. And we're going to put that into a structured building uh, with opportunities for training providers, social networking, professional bodies, and also opportunities for internships and apprenticeships. It's coming round very quickly to apprenticeship and internship areas right now. So in other words, around about February, March time, there's going to be a lot of students looking for opportunities. And your organisations, I think, should invest in youth to help us. And what we're trying to do here is to provide a structured pathway that if, uh, if a young person goes and asks their parents and tells them they want to be a hacker and they're just told, no, you can't do that, go and be an actuary or some other uh, interesting subject, uh, we can demonstrate there is actually a career path here, that we're professional in terms of what we do, and it's a very exciting, lucrative area in which to work. Um, once you've done that, you can then start to look at the levels of assurance that are provided. So in other words, at the bottom here, you've got government-approved certification bodies providing the certificates. In the middle, or at the moment, you've only got the CISOs, the CTOs, and other people signing off that they've looked at the penetration testing reports and, and other technical security uh, reviews. It would be really sensible if we could have somebody independent signing that off to recognise the good work that's been done in that area. And at the top, you've got regulated environments. In other words, the regulator will sign off that they accept a level of risk. It's not dissimilar from what the UK government already does with its accreditation scheme. But again, you don't really get an accreditation certificate, which I think is very unfair. So in other words, under Cyber Essentials, they'll give you a nice thing to hang on your wall. If you've actually gone through the whole process of accreditation, you get absolutely nothing apart from you're allowed to go live. We can then start to tie in other things. ISO 27001, I really like as a management standard. Uh, but again, it, within that, it talks about uh, your risk appetite. And what you should be able to do is to tie that risk appetite to the different levels of types of organisations that you are. So all of a sudden, we can start to tie those processes together with other standards. And then you can also do it in terms of cyber incident response, which is why I described the incident response services. So at the top here, you've got the CIR scheme or an equivalent. There is no equivalent within the financial services right now to the CIR scheme that is operated by the UK government. I have a meeting with the Bank of England tomorrow, and I'm going to try and drive that message home to try to get them to implement a, a cyber incident response scheme for the critical national infrastructure parts of the UK financial services. If you're part of that community, you should really help me because I'm trying to do you a favour. At the bottom level, so at the middle level here, you've got the CSIR scheme. And at the bottom, we haven't, at the moment, got anything. You know, the best I can find is the Nominet Cyber Assist. I have no idea how good that is. Um, but again, if we work together and collaboratively, the good practice can actually start to drift down in terms of just providing, at the very bottom, guidance for small SMEs that, provide, that require support in this area. We can then start to tie the whole thing together through the schemes, which I think is a really intelligent way to do things. So what do we do next? Um, consider the introduction of additional certification, I think, is an important consideration. The decision might be that we don't need it, but we haven't had the debate yet. And I'd really like the buying community to have that debate with me. We could provide target for companies to achieve. So in other words, you can identify what type of organisation and therefore you can target it. And you can provide appropriate levels of technical assurance based on something that is actually a bit meaningful. At the moment, you don't know where to stop and you don't know what appropriate really looks like. We can provide guidance on the applicability of the schemes at different levels, and again, I think that would be a really good document to be able to be provided to organisations. We could then promote that through the different industries. We could attain agreements between the regulators and influencers on the level of guidance to be provided. And also, because we are ahead of the game, we can actually influence what we're doing on the international stage. We are miles ahead in the UK in terms of what other organisations and countries are doing in this particular domain. And what we need to do under the Cyber Growth Partnership and on the, uh, on the aim to, to have another £2 billion worth of export, we should actually be driving in this area. We could also look at international qualification alignments and, again, links to other standards, including 27 and 1001. If you'd like to contribute to the Day in the Life videos, then my contact details are here. I'm really sorry that I'm not going to be here to answer any questions, but genuinely, if you email me, I'll come back to you. I'll get a lot of emails. It might not be immediate. Um, or you can give me a call at any time, and I'm more than happy to cover any of the issues that I've covered here today. This is a really exciting time for the industry. And I think what we can do is really make a difference on an international stage by doing things in a much more professional and structured manner. 
So thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you.